Hi, welcome to P. Clark Calc. This is Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. And in this particular video, we're going to take a look at what can happen when you go to integrate an improper fraction. It involves a number of different things, and so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Here we're looking at a rational function, and we're trying to integrate it. x squared plus 2, x plus 4, divided by x plus 1. And we're thinking maybe we could use a log rule, but that's the only rule we have out there at the moment for integrating a, a rational function. But the problem is, when you look at the general version of the log rule, is that we're looking for fractions where the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. Which, when we look at the case of our example, that can't possibly be because we're degree 2 on the numerator and 1 on the denominator. If those were reversed, we might have a chance by the, by the du indicator of the 1 degree drop. So we're in a little bit of a situation here. We can't do the integral yet. It needs a rewrite. And the reason why is this is, this is called improper. An improper rational function is one that has an equal or higher degree in the numerator than the denominator. And so what we need to do here is a rewrite. It's an algebraic rewrite, but it involves polynomial long division, which maybe it's been a while for you. So we're going to go ahead and do that and figure out what does that mean in terms of our integral. So we set up here our long division symbol. The dividend is our numerator. Just be careful if there have to be any missing degrees. You have to fill the holes there to hold their place as you run through the division algorithm. And then our divisor is x plus 1. And so as we go through, if you recall, we just are focusing on the highest degree term in the divisor. And what we have to multiply that by to obtain the highest remaining degree in the dividend. So there it states that we need a first term of x up in our quotient. x times x is x squared. And then we multiply that through the divisor, x squared plus 1x. And then we subtract. Now, if people are going to mess up long division, this is usually where it happens because they'll slip a sign. We're subtracting the whole quantity. So I will always write it that way with the parentheses and the negative sign out front. And then as I distribute that, I see I have no x squared and then 1x. And then we can bring down the 4 and get ready to go again here on our algorithm. So we run that again. x times 1 is x. So our final term in our quotient is 1. And then we multiply that through and subtract. And we get our remainder of 3. So what does that all mean? When we go to, to rewrite our integral in terms of the, the long division algorithm, it states that the dividend numerator here, divided by the divisor is equal to the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And that's helpful because if you look at what's going on here in the case of these, these rational functions, the quotient is going to be a polynomial. The quotient here is just, is just x plus 1. And we should know how to integrate that. So that should be pretty s simple. And then the remainder over the divisor in the long division algorithm, the remainder is always going to be at least one degree less than the divisor. So in cases where my divisor is degree 1, my, my remainder is going to be degree 0, which means I'm going to, ha to have to be able to do that fraction by the log rule every single time. So this is guaranteed in this case when the divisor is linear, this rewrite is guaranteed to give us a form that we can integrate. So here we end up with x plus 1 plus 3 over x plus 1. That's a big part of this question. Anytime you have an improper rational function, you want to run a, a long division algorithm this way and then know how to rewrite it using the division algorithm. And then we can go ahead and do our integral. Uh, before we do that, if we're all happy with the long division, we're going to clean up the screen here. 
So we should be okay with the x plus 1 part, so let's not worry about that for the moment. Let's take a look at the fraction 3 over x plus 1. If we would just, by some indifference rule, remove that and work on that off on the side here. We have a number of options, but, but we see we're degree 0 in the numerator, degree 1 in the denominator, so that's, that means the log rule should work here. And we may want to even use a constant multiple. We could take the 3 out front and read that as 3 times the integral 1 over x plus 1 dx. And if we do that, then we see that we have u in the denominator. If u is x plus 1, du is 1 dx. So this thing is ready to go. And it's du over u, so it's a log rule. So the antiderivative of that particular part of our integral is 3 times the natural log of the absolute value x plus 1 with the plus c. So we go ahead and we paste that back into our problem. We, we get our solution. We have x squared over 2, my power rule, constant rule, plus x to the first, plus 3 times the natural log of x plus 1, absolute value there, plus c. So that's guaranteed to work every single time as we go forward. Uh, the one couple of little points here before we wrap it up. One thing is when you have these log integrals, the log properties may be applied. It depends what we're doing. There's no problem with our answer the way we have it, but remember by power rule for logs, we could write that as the natural log of x plus 1 quantity to the third if we wished. I'm not sure that gains you a whole lot here. And then there's one other point we should make, this, this particular case we're looking at, this integral of a constant divided by a linear, actually has a shortcut rule. It's pretty nice to know, and let's just put it up there. What this shortcut rule states is that anytime we have the integral of a number, a, divided by a linear, bx plus k we're calling it here, then by u substitution the same thing always happens, and the result is a divided by b, which is really the ratio of the lead coefficients there, times the natural log of the denominator plus c. So we see here a over b would be 3 over 1 in our example, and then it's 3 over 1 times the natural log of x plus 1, which is how we got to our solution here. So it's a shortcut rule. It means that you can get by without it um, if you just go ahead and do the u sub. But they're pretty handy to know, save you a lot of time down the road. And that's a very common type of rational function. So, so you, I'd encourage you to, to memorize that as well. It's just a special case of the du over u integral general log rule. Here at P. Clark Calc, we do practical calculus for the busy math student. But if you'd like to learn more about this subject, you can look it up on my textbooks available on Amazon for a nice price. And until next time, I'm Pete Clark.